Hey guys, it's Paul here. I got another recipe for y'all. It was posted on my Facebook page. Uh, it's the honey garlic glazed meatballs. It was posted by the Taste of Home. Ended up on, on my Facebook page there. And I uh, looked at the picture and saw some of the ingredients. I thought it would be pretty good to try out and see what it tastes like. For this recipe, uh, these are the things that you're going to need. Shallow baking pan. Cooling rack to cook on. Aluminum foil, whisk, cooking pot, mixing spoon, one cup measuring cup, half cup measuring cup, quarter cup measuring cup, one tablespoon, one teaspoon, spatula, mixing bowl or electric mi mixer, some spray on pan, and a knife, as well as a cutting board, which I don't have room to stick on there as you can quite tell from all the stuff that you need for this recipe. Alright, these are all the ingredients, just as enough ingredients for, for tools I just showed you a second ago. We got, uh, we got butter, we got minced garlic, uh, we got soy sauce, uh, salt in my, in my shot glass there, we got some onions, some ketchup or cat soup, <laughs> however you want to say it, some milk, some honey, uh, it said Dried breadcrumbs, but these, these are Italian breadcrumbs. I'm sure I'll be the same, being their meatballs. Uh, two eggs in here, if you can see them. And two pounds of meat. Alright, the next thing we need to do is center this pan in front of me here. And I'm going to put some aluminum foil down to catch the meat as it's cooking. And I'm going to put the cooling rack in here to set the meatballs on. Since it said put on a greased rack and a shallow baking pan, so I'm guessing that's a cooling rack. And I'm greasing it with a pan. That's almost out. Alright, so that's greased. Okay, we'll set this off at the side here for a second. We won't need that just, just yet, but uh, I like to go and get this done because apparently they tell you to do it after you mix everything together. So, first things first, or second. Alright, the first ingredient says to combine the eggs and milk in a large bowl. So this is where the electric mixture comes in handy because you keep adding stuff to it to make it a little uh, thicker. So here we go. Here's the, the milk. And here's the eggs. Get my spatula here. Get all the... All right, there's that. I'm going to use the, the whisk attachment. And mix these together pretty good. I'm going to lock this in place. Put on a... Okay, those are mixed together pretty good. Uh, next thing it says to add the breadcrumbs, so this is where we're going to start getting thicker. So I'm going to remove the whisk attachment and put on the paddle bit. But I'm going to wait, put all the ingredients in first. It says put the breadcrumbs in, so slide in the breadcrumbs in. Then it says put onions, so I'm going to put the onions in. Da -da -da -da, da -da 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 stubborn onions and the salt my salt in all right now we get the paddle bed i'm gonna go ahead and mix these together just to, so they won't clump up right quick on low
All right, let's, let's do that just for a second. Now, the second thing is to crumble the beef over the mixture and mix well. So, I'll take my meat here. I'm going to temporarily remove my paddle bit just for a few minutes. All right, I'm taking the beef. It says crumble it over the mixture. I could probably just pour it in let the mixture do its thing, but it said crumbly, so I'm crumbling in there. And this is raw meat, so it's not cooked yet. You can, you can do this in a bowl if you, you know, if you want to. But for time wise, I'm gonna just use my electric mixer here. Hopefully, it'll do a, just as good a job. All right, there's that. I'm gonna put the paddle bit back on. Get back down, lock it in place, put it on low, and let it mix well. All right, I'm gonna stop it a second and use my spatula and kind of scoop off the stuff and kind of make sure it's not just clumping up and not getting thoroughly mixed. So, yeah, yeah just a little bit longer, just not much, not much longer, just a little bit. All right, just a, just a few more minutes and I'll be done with that. Okay, we'll call that done. Looks pretty mixed mixed to me. I'm going to go ahead and get all the meat off of here. Go ahead and remove this. Take the paddle bit off. And I'll be right back. All right, we got the pan here. Um, this actually might be a part where you get, get some extra little hands to help you make them because you're going to be making a bunch of little balls rolled up. So what you do is you take, take some meat cornbread um, uh, onion mixture and just make little one inch balls and uh, it, it don't have to be exactly one inch if you want something bigger you can make them bigger if you wanted so just keep, keep making them till you run, just run out of meat or places to stick them or something all right got them all uh, rolled out here it, it got me about about 30 uh, 30 balls on here uh, I guess I could have spaced them better and actually got them all nice even rows, but that's all going to cook anyway, so. Anyway, the next thing it says to do is to cook your oven at 400 degrees and cook these for 12 to 15 minutes until they're not pink no more. So, let's go stick them in the oven. Alright, well I got them all out of the oven. Uh, I cooked them actually for two, more, two extra minutes just in case there was... Not completely done, especially with some of these bigger ones here, but anyway, we need to start making the sauce to simmer it, and after that we can put, put these in there, so let's get the sauce to simmer in. Alright, the first thing it needs to tell us to do is we need to saute uh, the garlic and the butter in there. So, take the butter, well, it's just stuck in the bottom of the thing there, and scoop it out. Still stuck, there we go. Got that in the bottom of the pan. And let me put the garlic in here. And it says to saute them together so it gives them the garlic nice, something to, a uh, nice little tender flavor. Get that signal to warm up here. I'm it on the high right now. I might knock it down to medium high to saute because if it starts cooking too, too much. Yeah, I Never really know what all the saute degrees are, so. I may have to drop it, drop it down to medium high. I don't want to overcook the butter. All right, I'm gonna stir here for a few minutes. Yeah, so it probably maybe, maybe it was too high. Anyway, it says to saute the butter and the garlic until tender. So I guess that would be the, the garlic that would be tender. Looks 
pretty good there. Now, next is to go with the ketchup. All right, so we get the ketchup. I'm gonna move the spoon out of the way here. Got a little bit on my finger, but that's okay. And honey. Honey! I get the honey in there. And the soy sauce. Go ahead on medium low. I'm put on low just just for a few minutes while I get myself situated here. Get the honey off my spatula. Good enough. All right, so it's bring to a boil. So I'm gonna put it on medium high. I don't want to burn nothing. I'm stirring. I right, get a boiling, reduce heat, put on low, and it says to simmer for five minutes. Cover it up, and we'll wait for about five minutes for it to simmer. Got my timer, and we gotta wait. All right, we got it all uh, cooked here for for five minutes. It's been simmering. Uh, nice thing it says to is to add all the meatballs. To here and evenly coat them as we you know stir them up. So I'm gonna start adding all 30 meatballs in here. Duds, duds. And sure is a lot of a lot of meatballs for a lot less sauce, but hey, what do I know? I'm just following the instructions. Let me go ahead and stir these around. So just stir them around carefully so you won't break them apart and evenly coat them. So I'm going to continue putting them in. Maybe what we kind of need is to have like a, a secondary pot that way you can just pour all the meatballs in and then pour the stuff on top of it, stirring as you go. That way it won't be as bad. But then again, it might be not too bad. I don't want to. Yeah, it is kind of hard to stir because I feel like I'm just touching it. The same one over and over again, and and uh, I'm actually broke one right there. Anyway, give me a few minutes to get this stirred up, and then uh, we'll start cooking. All right, I got them uh, uh, coated everything. I'm covered back up, and I kind of I'm crank it up to medium heat just for a few minutes. Actually, uh, medium low heat, and it says to cook it for. Five to ten more minutes, so I'm gonna go for all ten, and then cook it because I don't want I, I want the ones on top to cook all the way and stay warm. So I'll be back in ten minutes. All right, well those meatballs are cooking. I have another installment of the Making Adventures of Boudreaux and Thibodeau. A while back, Boudreaux and Thibodeau did some yard work for Mr. Malonso. And all year long, they saved up to $1,000 a piece. And Boudreaux goes, you know what, Thibodeau? And Bo Thibodeau goes, what's that, Boudreaux? Boudreaux goes, well, Thibodeau, I hope we take $1,000, go down to the casino and see if we can win some more. And Thibodeau goes, man, that's a great idea. So Boudreaux and Thibodeau got dressed up one night, got in the car and went down to the casino. As they got in the pool in the parking lot, and Boudreaux said, I tell you what, you stay here in the car, Thibodeau, and I'll go in, in the casino and... And see how much money I can win. And Tibbo goes, okay, I'll do that. So Boudreau sit there, and, and uh, Tibbo sits there. And Boudreau gets out of the car, goes inside the casino, and he probably went in and maybe, maybe two minutes, he come right back out and sit. And he, and he walked up to the car and got in. And Tibbo goes, man, how? What happened? I come. You wasn't in there very long. I said, man, I got in there and lost it all. It all went like, like super fast, quick. And Tibbo goes, man, well, I guess it's my turn. I got my thousand dollars. 
Let me go in there and see what I can win. So Thibodeau gets out of the car, and Boudreaux's sitting there waiting. Thibodeau goes inside the casino, and man, he's in there the longest time. He's like there for hours and hours. Boudreaux's like, man, I got I to gotta call the SWAT team to go in after him. He's been there so long. And finally, Thibodeau comes out of the casino, and he's dragging the biggest bag of money behind him. And he gets in, he puts the bag of money in the trunk of the car, and he gets in, and Boudreaux's, man, where'd you get all that? Thibodeau goes, man, I found a machine. It's a sure win every time. I put a dollar in, get four quarters back. And thank you for listening to the Amazing Adventures of Boudreaux and Thibodeau. All right. Uh, it's finished cooking now. Got 10 minutes off the clock. I'll go ahead and shut this down. And move this over. See what these honey garlic glazed meatballs are all about. Oh. All right, let me open this lid here. Mmm, it smells real good. Nice and warm. The meat's cooked all the way through. There's a couple that broke, but that's all right. It all goes to the same place. All right, I guess I'll uh, try one out. We'll see what they taste like. So I'll try this one. And then I'll try a different one just for to say it was different. Okay. All right. Okay, got a couple meatballs here. Let's try one out and uh, see if this recipe actually tastes good. Cooked all the way through. It's good. Yep. It's missing something. Not sure, but it is good. I do like it. And it's actually pretty quick. Do it all at once. We've done all cooked in about 15 minutes. All right, let me, let me try this other one. Different meatball. Very good. I do like it. They do taste real good. They held their coating uh, very well. This was the honey garlic glazed meatballs by, uh, <laughs> sorry, by the Taste of Home. And I'll have the, the recipe, the link down in the description. And this recipe does actually taste good. So, you know, click like down there, make, make a comment. Um, and this is Paul, and I hope you all have a wonderful day, and please subscribe.